Okay. Beta. I'm gonna show y'all boys on. What's it up, baby? Y'all didn't know. Big Boss Hog, K Po, through the door. Hit us out the box. I'm scared you. So, peep game. We just gonna get straight into it. All right? Uh um, Touch on, don't ask what people do. Y'all know that. Caught him in the health hotline. Don't off yourself. Talk to somebody. Box, run, do something. But don't off yourself. You matter. Uh, so, I saw this a couple days ago. Uh, I've been busy. You know, I've had other uh, things that I've been doing. Like putting a dog killer together that didn't come with directions. Don't buy dog killers off Amazon, bro. But anyway, uh, <laughs> A lot of people feel like L. Spencer is retired because he deactivated his Instagram, right? And he posted some cryptic message on Twitter, aka X. He chucked up the peace sign, right? Um, so I'm gonna get my response to that. I don't believe L. Spence has retired. I just think he's taking a break from social media. That's what I think. Social media is a is a place where. Many people have a voice, right? Many people can say whatever and however and whatever and not, and there's no consequences for their actions. Really, they've eliminated in our society as a whole accountability, right? Because I grew up, you said something, you got hands put on you or somebody gonna come talk to you about it. It may not be the person who was offended or emotional about it, but they gonna come ask you, what did you mean by this? You know what I mean? And that's, that's how it was. You did something, there's a consequence. Now, they've eliminated that altogether. So even on social media, people feel like, oh, I can say what I want. I can say this racial slur. I can call you a monkey. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can, I can say whatever, however I want to say it, you know? You know? And, and nothing going to happen to me. Unless you say something about the alphabet people. You say something about the alphabet people, they, they going to cancel you. You know, that's the only thing you still can't say nothing about. I don't want no smoke with them. They they cancel your everything. They try to take your whole livelihood from you. You be like, cuz. But, uh, all I'm saying is, bro, I believe he deactivated his Instagram because of probably the backlash. He probably still upset that he lost the coffee. I'm not gonna lie to you. Earl didn't, I, I'm telling you, Earl Spence didn't think he was going to lose to no Terrence Crawford. He didn't think that. He didn't think that. He knew it was going to be a tough fight, but he didn't think that. He didn't believe that Terrence Crawford was going to beat him. I'm just going to keep it a thousand with you. So he may have been thinking about that, like, man, dang. And he may be on Instagram, he's seeing all these posts about Crawford. People post about Crawford underneath his picture. He getting, he like, dang, man, I, I can't escape this. You know, that why you think he didn't say nothing for like six, seven months, you know, after the fight? I won't say six, seven months, but like five months after the fight, he didn't say nothing. He wasn't even in the country, I don't think. You know what I'm saying? He was out of the country. Excuse me, I burped. He was out of the country. You know what I mean? And then when he came back, and then he posted, I'm back, you know, and then that's when he came, talk about his eye and, you know, the you know the reason why Crawford was getting off on him because of the cataract like all of that you know what I mean that's what he started talking about that you know and he got an uphill battle I, you know I've said that I said man that's a that's a tough uh mountain to climb because it's not the fact that he lost it's how he lost right he didn't deliver see Crawford delivered on his end right Crawford delivered on his end. Errol didn't deliver, right? Everybody thought this was going to be a competitive fight. Regardless if you thought Crawford was going to win or you thought Errol was going to win, you thought it was going to be a competitive fight. Like me, I thought it was going to be competitive until the later rounds, and I thought Errol Spence was going to be able to get Crawford, and I, I think I said between rounds 9 and 11. You know what I mean? That's what I thought, right? Well, Crawford... <laughs> Turned up on Errol. You know what I mean? He turned up on Errol. And he, I mean, he could have got him out of there early. You know what I mean? But like I said, it's not the fact that he lost. I get it if Errol lost. 
but it was a competitive fight. I don't think he would have been as bothered by it. I think he's more bothered by it because he didn't live up to what the fight was supposed to live up to. You get what I mean? And that's why he's like, dang. And that, that could be the case. He may not be bothered by it. I'm just speculating. You know what I mean? He may not. He may deactivate his Instagram for a whole nother reason. He may be fixing some stuff on there. You know what I mean? We don't know why. But I believe it's due to the fact that, you know, he just need a mental break. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, for five months, he wasn't on Instagram. His Instagram was active, but he wasn't on there. But he may, maybe he doing some upgrades. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he changing some stuff around. I don't know. But one thing I know, two things for so, I don't believe it's been for time. You know what I'm saying? But I find it ironic now that everybody want him to retire. Everybody's concerned about his safety. Oh, hell, you, you know, you just need to go ahead and retire, man. You got too many injuries, just retire. The reason why they want that man to retire is because he just fought Terrence Crawford, right? And they want that jacket. So Terrence Crawford, so they can say Terrence Crawford retired one of the best fighters at 147 pounds. Terrence Crawford a bad man. But that statement right there, because I've had somebody tell me that in the comment section in one of my videos. And that same person was the same somebody that said Earl Spence is overrated, he overhyped, and all this other stuff. So which one is it? Is he overhyped? Is he is he overhyped? Or was he was he a great welterweight? And Terrence Crawford just got the best of him that night. Was the better welterweight that night. You know what I'm saying? See, a lot of people want to try to downgrade L, downgrade L. Spence accomplishments and his run at 147. They want to try to talk about, oh, he fought fighters who were tailor-made for him. How? Who was tailor-made for him? What, what styles did Terrence Crawford fight that wasn't tailor-made for him? The last time I checked, Jeff Horn was tailor-made for him. Jeff Horn was trash. We got to keep it a thousand. He was garbage. Crawford went up and fought him. He didn't go up and fight Keith Thurman. He didn't go up and fight nobody tough. He went and fought Jeff Horn. A guy coming off a questionable win who everybody thought Manny Pacquiao beat him. But he went up and fought him. Do I need to, do I need to go down that road? So all I'm saying is at the end of the day, all that don't matter no more. Right? Earl Spitz, arguably in history, one of the best runs at 147 pounds in history. Right? He just didn't, only thing he didn't do was beat Crawford to become undisputed. But he went and fought everybody and took their belt. Crawford didn't do that for his own personal reasons. Right? He didn't do that. He was able to hold on to his belt. And how he was relevant was because he had a belt. He had a belt and he knew that, hey, in order for this dude to come become undisputed, he got to fight me. Whoever want to become undisputed, they got to fight me. So he just made sure he held on to his belt, which is smart. Something Shakur is doing. Shakur Stevenson, I got video coming by him. Shakur Stevenson, <laughs> got a, a belt and he learned it from Bud. Hold on to that belt. They got to see you. That's it. So Cook keep talking about he went out. I, I, I'm going to talk about him later. All I said is at the end of the day, ask me a lot of words. Terrence Crawford, you know what I mean? Got the job done. When he fought L, he got the job done. That's what it is. He was able to hold to a belt, skip the line, and fight Errol. And, and he came undisputed champion. That's what it is. Errol Spence had to fight this person, get a belt. That person, get a belt. Got injured. Came back, fought a mandatory, then fought this person, got another belt. Right? There's some things that Errol Spence did that wasn't smart. Right? The layoffs, not fighting. In this boxing game, you gotta stay active. That's just what it is. And that was Errol Spence's downfall. 
I don't believe it was the injuries. It was the layoffs. He been out the ring too long. And this boxer guy, especially when you fight on an elite level, you gotta stay active. That's just it. You gotta stay active, right? If you fighting scrubs, yeah, you could get by. You could do what Keith Thurman be doing when he fight dudes and then come back. I'm gonna say Mar Barr's a scrub. Mar Barr's a good fighter, you know. But he barely made it out there fight. Mar Barr's hurting him in that fight. But I'm saying you could come back and fight a sea level fighter off a long layoff and win, right? And I would say Mar Barr's like a B level fighter. What I'm saying is when you get on that elite level, you gotta keep fighting. And looking back, hindsight, although I still consider it a duck move from Terrence Crawford from not fighting El Spence the first time, it was a smart move because he got to fight in, right? He got to fight in because he understood the circumstances. Let me get this fight in. So when it comes to fighting El, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fresh. My reflexes is up. I'm good. Let me get some rounds in. Crawford really could have stopped David Avenesia earlier than that. But he got rounds in. He wanted to get rounds in with Avenesia. He kind of carried him. It was a pointless fight. But he he fought that fight because he wanted he didn't want to go straight into the L Spence fight without fighting. Because up until that point, I'm to fight David, David Avenesia, he ain't fought to the year prior to that in 2022. So like I said, very intelligent move by Crawford. In hindsight, 2020, looking back at it, him going back, fighting Devin Evanesia. It's still a duck, though. He's still ducking. He's still walking around with them duck shoes, the ducks. What what, what uh, Marlo TV say? Duck sauce. Shout out to the real Marlo TV. It, it, he had duck sauce all over. You know what I'm saying? But that's the case. That's how he rolled. That's how he got down. He did it, right? And it was able to help him be sharp and, and help him be victorious against Errol Spence. You know what I mean? A lot of y'all bud buddies, y'all say certain things that your fighter that you supporting don't believe. Y'all, I hear people say El Spence is, you know, he, he's over high, he media made. If he's media made, why is Terrence Crawford having pre-camps for the camp when it comes to El Spence? If El Spence is trash, right? We got to keep it a thousand. We, we going to speak freely. If Earl Spence is a trash fighter, why did he have a pre-camp before the camp? That's all I'm saying. He had a pre-camp before the camp, right? He sat there and was like, oh, you know, I need to have a, a, a pre-camp. And he trained with the MMA fighters before he had actual camp. Why did he do that? He knew the dangers of this fight. He knew what type of fighter he was getting in the ring with. So, like I keep saying, y'all say certain things, but the dude you advocating for is saying something completely different. That's all I'm saying. He was preparing for a war. That's what he was preparing for, and he didn't get a war. He was ready. Hell wasn't. It is what it is, right? For personal reasons on Air Smith's side, right? So, I'm saying this. To keep it a thousand. El Spence will be back. And, and that's what I believe. Until he, if he come out and say, hey, I'm retired, I'm done, all right, cool, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'll rescind, <laughs> I'll rescind my statements. But until then, I don't believe he retired. He want that get back, he want that smoke. I told you, in Texas, man, we don't, we, <laughs> we gonna fight every day. I, you, I don't think y'all understand the mindset. We gonna fight every day till I win. That's just how we do it down here. We don't have a mentality that oh you beat me up. Oh let me let me go fight this dude. Nah, bro. Hey, we gonna keep fighting until I win. That's just what it is. We we can fight forty times. If I'm losing thirty times, hey, we gonna keep fighting. I don't care. <laughs> we can get to thirty nine, and then I win on the fortieth time. I hey, I won. All right, babe, we done. That's what it is. I'm telling you, man. That's how we do it down here. I ain't finna be no, oh, well, you beat me up. I'm done. Uh, uh, I don't want any more. Nah, bro, we're gonna keep fighting. We're gonna fight. Every time you see me, we fight. 
<laughs> I live it as I think. Bosco.